In this sports Photoshop tutorial, we're going to go over step by step how to create this game day graphic for the Duke Blue Devils. All right, the first thing we got to do is create our canvas to work on. So go up to File, New, and I like to work with more of a vertical graphic. So my height here is going to be set to around 1400 pixels compared to my width, which is going to be around 1200. All right, now that we have our canvas to work on, you got to hit the lock button to unlock the background. Then we can click on the rectangle on the toolbar on the left hand side, and we're going to click and drag over our entire canvas. Next, click on fill and then hit the color wheel. This will allow you to select whatever color that you want to fill the background with. Once you've selected a color, hit OK, and now you've already completed step one. All right, step two here, let's add some background photos. This can be done by just dragging them into our canvas. Once we have them in our canvas, let's hit the drop down menu and then select darker color. This gives us a pretty unique look for our background images, but we're not quite done yet. Now you can do this process as many times as you guys would like and fill it with as many background photos as you want. You just got to resize the background photos so that it covers your entire Photoshop page. If you take a closer look at the background photos, they look kind of boxy and they don't really fit well next to each other. So in order to solve this problem, click on your image and then select the layer mask button. With your layer mask selected, hit the paintbrush tool and make sure that the hardness on your brush is set to 0%. If you aren't quite sure what I'm talking about, there's a little video in the top left corner here that shows you how to get your brush down to zero. Now, as long as you have the color black selected to paint, you are good to softly erase the edges. All right, already done with step two, moving right on to step number three our text portion of the graphic. Hit the text button on the toolbar and then click on your background. This will create a text layer. Now to edit what the text says and what font you're using, hit the text button again, hover over your text and then click and drag to highlight it. I'm gonna be using the font Jersey M54. If you want this text, it's gonna be available in the description below as a thank you to liking the video as well as subscribing to the channel. Now, if you take a look here, you can see your text is on top of your skyline and we want it below. So we're gonna go over to our layers panel and we're gonna click and we are going to drag it below our skyline layer. And so if you've been following all the steps as of right now, this is how it looks. And you know, this isn't bad looking by any means, but what we wanna try to do is keep the same font, but we're gonna make the game day text taller and you guys are gonna see why this is just so important later on in the video. All right, let's get into the steps of making our text taller. First, right click on your text layer and then go to convert to shape. Now find the direct selection button on the toolbar on the left hand side by clicking and holding. Once we have the direct selection tool selected, we can click and then drag across the bottom of our text. What this does is it allows us to extend our text downward by holding shift and then hitting the arrow key down four or five times. The same thing can be done with the top of the game day text by holding shift and then click the arrow keys up. Sometimes what happens when we extend our text vertically, the font gets messed up. So you have to adjust parts of some of the lettering like the A's in this example I'm using. This can be done by doing the same thing. Click and drag and then hold shift, hit the arrow keys up or down depending on what you're editing. You can repeat this process as much as you would like to get the desired look for your text. For me, I'm going to extend the text out as much as possible because we're going to be putting the players over top of the lettering in step four, like you see in this picture right here. So I'm just going to play with it a little bit so that it covers majority of my background. Once you have the word game day looking how you want, let's add some effects to it. Click on the text layer and then select the effects button and we're going to find drop shadow. You will want to copy these exact settings in order to get the shadow effect behind your text. Now find the gradient overlay effect, and we're gonna change the gradient to a basic black and white gradient. You can do this by clicking on the gradient, going into the basics folder, and then selecting this one right here. Hit okay, and what you can do is reduce the opacity of the gradient, and that gives you a nice fading to black look on your white text, which is really, really cool, and something I highly recommend that you guys do as well. All right, on to step four here, we're gonna create this cool effect with our players that almost looks like they're on top of the game day text. So look at the elbows here. He comes forward in our graphic and it's almost like he's hovering over top of the word game day. 
To do this, add your players. It doesn't have to be three, it can just be one if you choose. Take the main subject layer and then drag it all the way below the game day text layer. If you're doing three players, drag those three players below the game day text as well. You can do this by clicking, holding shift, and then just dragging them down below that layer. Right click on your main subject layer. In my case, it's gonna be number two, Cooper Flag. I'm gonna go all the way to the top here, and then I'm gonna select Duplicate Layer. I'm gonna drag this duplicated layer all the way to the top of the Layers panel. Once we've done that with our player layer selected, let's hit Layer Mask. You can see that the Layer Mask is selected by the white brackets around the Layer Mask. Now you can press Command-I, and this is gonna invert the mask. Let's head over to the paintbrush on our toolbar and click it. And now we're gonna find these little arrows right here. And once we click on that, it should flip it to white. Our hardness of our brush should be set to 100%. And we gotta remember that underneath this black layer mask is a full image of Cooper Flag. So all we need to do is paint back on those elbows. We are doing this so that it looks like our subject, our player is hanging over top of our game day text. All right, moving on to step five here, let's add our two team logos as well as some brightness and glow to our graphic design. All right, first click and drag the two logos that you're gonna be using in the design. I'm gonna be turning the Duke logo all white to match my design. You can do this by creating a new adjustment layer and then selecting solid color. What this does is it creates an all white solid color layer Make sure this layer is directly above the logo that you want to turn the color solid white. In this video, I want to change the Duke logo to all white. Next, you can right click on your solid color white layer and find create clipping mask. This will turn your logo to all white. All right, now that we have our logos in place, we want to add the glow behind them. All right, first click on your logo and then head into the effects button and click outer glow. You're gonna to wanna to copy these exact settings, hit okay, and you're gonna do the exact same thing for the other logo. Let's add the word versus in between these two. You can do that by going to the text button on the toolbar on the left-hand side, and then typing in versus. I'm gonna bring this layer up, I'm gonna extend it out, and I'm gonna change the color to white. Let's add some text in here, and we're gonna be using the font Brightness Signature for the word Versus in between our two logos. If you guys are looking to use this as a template for your sports posters, I recommend downloading the PSD from my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, sweet, now we have the fun part. Let's add an adjustment layer, and we're gonna to go to Color Lookup. We will add the Color Lookup Kodak 2383, and we will decrease the opacity just a little bit. What this does is it adds a little bit of brightness back to our graphic. Next, we're gonna to go to Selective Color and wanna find the main color of our graphic. For my example, most of my graphic is blue, so I'm gonna to go to the blues. I'm just gonna move these sliders back and forth until I feel like the blue looks how I want. Really, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just moving them back and forth till I get a blue that looks like Duke. The other color you can change is the yellows because that's present in our player images. And again, I'm gonna move them back and forth till I get an authentic color that represents my players. Now with my graphic, I really only have two colors, blue and yellow that I can adjust. You guys may have more. All right, you've made it to the final step in the final touches. Click on your top layer and hold down Shift then Alt, Command, and then E. You should be pressing them all at the same time, and what this does, it creates a single merge layer at the top of your Layers panel. Now we can go to Filter, Find Noise, and we're gonna add noise. I'm gonna keep mine at around 23%, and then hit OK. With our top layer selected, let's add a layer mask. Then press Command-I to invert that mask. And now what we can do is carefully paint on our noise in specific areas on Photoshop. You can decrease the flow at the top so that the effect isn't too much and you're not adding a lot of noise. You can see what this looks like without the noise. It's just a little effect that you guys all need to be doing because it goes a long way. 
And once you've done that, you've completed your graphic. If you've learned something or you enjoyed the video, please drop a like for me. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next video.